So I'm going to be mindful of everyone's time. Um, and I do want to just make a, a quick announcement that this is a one of the sessions of the Decentralized Identity Foundation Hackathon 2024. Um, it will be recorded and it will be in the Discord and also eventually made available on YouTube as well um, for anyone who missed it. Um, but there are a few things I just like to mention, um, which is one is if you haven't joined um, the um, hackathon yet and you would like to, in order to join, you do have to register through DevPost. Um, so registration and also submission has to be through DevPost. I'm going to drop a few links here that are going to be useful um, if you don't have them yet. Um, so the DevPost platform. We also have the Hackathon Discord. Every sponsor has a channel set up so you can ask questions, um, including PSE um, does have a channel as well where you can ask questions. Um, and then we have an info site because we there's so much. Um, we have 15 sponsors. There's so much um, that we have just people to be for people to review really that we decided to set up a separate site um because dev, dev post really uh, wasn't enough so um you have an info site um and if you have any questions um i'll also drop um, our hackathon email um so with that i'd like to introduce our friends from psc the ethereum foundation uh, we have yanis and cedor who are going to share about their challenge on zkp all right take it away thank you Thank you very much. Yanis, do you want to start? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, um, can you can you um, uh, share share the, the slides? Mm -hmm. uh, hi, everybody. So um, uh, Sedor and I are like a, a full time uh, contributor uh, at uh, PSE. So uh, PSE is uh, the research and development uh, team of uh, the Ethereum Foundation. Uh, we worked, uh, we are mainly working on programmable, what we call programmable cryptography. So is the field uh, of development where you have like uh, zero knowledge uh, uh, FHE, MPC uh, developed. Uh, so we are, um, we are developing only fully open source uh, project and open code. So all our projects are like, uh, public uh they are like uh, public goods uh and we are uh building them to like uh, uh bring all this uh, crypto primitive uh into a real product um and we want like to support like all the developers that want like to take this primitive to actually like solve real world uh, use cases um i are the slides are shared or not yet i can't see i can't see them Um, did you say that you shared the slides and you're not seeing them? Um, like we, we, we are, we, we only want like to share like, uh, them, like from one computer, like the door, like, are you able like to, were you able to share them? Of course. Yeah. Let me talk. Oh, okay. Can you see them? Yes. Perfect. Yes. Right. Yeah. All Just right. let me know when you want to go next. Uh yeah, we can go to the to the next uh, next one. Yes. So thank you. So yeah. So as I said, um, uh, I introduced like uh, what is PSE. Uh, just the last word about like uh, education. So for us, it's like really important like to share all the knowledge we accumulated about uh, all these tools, um, and um, like uh, being like part of uh, such an event like around like uh, self sovereign identity um, and all the what like uh, all the standards that uh, W two C is building, uh, such as VCs, the IDs is really important for us. Uh, I think we want like to see more uh, our like our tools like being more standardized uh, and uh, being like uh, compliant with uh, with uh, the standards. So we are super uh, happy, happy to be here. So if we go on to the, the next item, 
uh, we just wanted like to give a brief introduction about like what are ZKPs and what are, what are their importance uh, in digital identity. Um, yes, yeah, so um, I'm just we are just going to define uh, the setup in the next uh, the next slide. So uh, basically, uh, in ZKPs, you have a setup where you have like two parties. You have a prover and a verifier. And so the job of the prover is to convince the verifier that uh, some uh, information or some computation were done right. So uh, the goal for the prover is like on uh, his side to compute some something and just uh, out of this computation, there will be a proof and uh, the, the verifier must be convinced about like the computation of this uh, proof. So in the next slide, we introduced like uh, three uh, properties of uh, ZKPs. The first being like uh, completeness. So if the prover knows uh, an information, he must be able like to um, uh, convince the verifier that he knows it. On the other side, we have soundness. So on soundness, um, the important thing to note is that uh, the prover cannot like convince the verifier of false information. So if the computation were done not done right, of, or if a, if a data is like uh, not right, the verifier should, shouldn't be convinced uh, by the prover about that. And of course, the most uh, important property is the zero knowledge. So the prover uh, like can hide information from uh, the verifier, but still convince the verifier that the proof is uh, correct. So, um, that said, like on the next slide, we introduce like uh, a subfamily of uh, ZKPs, which are called like ZK snarks. So zero knowledge is a large field. You have like uh, a bunch of way to build like zero knowledge proofs. What we uh, have worked uh, the most like at PSC and developed the most is like ZK snark. So just to introduce like why there were like a bunch of development uh, around ZKPs like in the last uh, in the last years. So mainly was um, uh, because of uh, blockchain and like ZKPs were like uh, um, like the main way to have a scalability on blockchain. That's why like a lot of uh, research um, were uh, done uh, to achieve like uh, the scalability of blockchain. But like from all this work that I've done, like we are now able to have like uh, working tools and um, like uh, for example, ZK Snark protocols uh, that let us like uh, do some computation and uh, make uh, make them uh, kind of snarkified. So um, what are ZK snark? So they have like, uh, oh, sorry, can you? Yep, thank you, uh, thank you, Tidor. Um, yeah, so ZK snark have like a, um, like a very useful properties. Um, so first of all, they, like they are uh, zero knowledge. So as we introduce, uh, so that's why we 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 are using them. Um, the other big property about ZK snark is they are like succinct. So when you want like to have like a very short proof, uh, even if like the, the computation is like uh, pretty big, uh, you still want to have like a, a short proof and like you don't want the verifier to have like too much uh, work to do. So ZK Snark like enable that. So especially like there is one protocol called Gore 16 where it can have like very succinct proof and it's also very useful to have like a, a very small prover, a verifier, sorry, it's like in the case of blockchain. So if you want like to compute some um, something like on your uh, on your side, do a self attestation based on uh, some personal information that you don't want to reveal into the public space. You can um, you can generate a proof and then send it to the blockchain, and like it will cost like uh, uh, it, the cost of verification will be will be cheap. Uh, they are non interactive, uh, so you don't have to go back and forth between like the prover and the verifier. The prover can do the the job on his side, then like send uh, send the proof to the verifier, and the proof verifier is verifying the proof. And uh, uh, of course, there are like uh, argument of knowledge, so you can prove that you know uh, some inputs. And as like you can see in the in the illustration, uh, what is uh, super cool about zk snark is that uh, you can like have uh, you can choose when you're building your circuit uh, what information do you want to be public, so what inputs like can be public and what what inputs can be private. So uh, on the next slide, we introduce like. Uh, what are the use cases? So of course, like it's very useful for privacy and selective disclosure. Uh, we're gonna do like a small case study about uh, 
uh, how it can be applied uh, on signature verification. Um, and just we wanted to introduce what are like uh, the kind of the state of the art like um, to build Zika pieces um, and uh, uh, Zika snark, but you have also like uh, Starks uh, Starks proof that are that is another field of uh, zero knowledge. Um, so the main the main way to develop Zika pieces right now is like uh, through DSL, so domain specific languages. Um, so you have like uh, two main ones, which are like uh, Circom and Hello2 that we developed. Uh, um, a lot like uh, we we used to to develop uh, with them like uh, a lot at PSC. Uh, you have uh, zk VMs. So basically, the idea of zk VMs is like so in Circom and Hello2, you will you will build a, a circuit, and um, every implementation of a circuit have like its own verifier. So meaning that you are like in a world where every prot all the protocols have like uh, their own verifier and you have like uh, multiple verifiers. So what ZK VMs are trying to achieve is like to have like a one unique verifier for all the computation, meaning that you can have a VM. Um, this VM support like all kinds of operations and no matter what like uh, your circuit is uh, that you implement inside of the ZK VM, uh, like you will still use the same uh, unique verifier for all the protocols that are built like on top of this uh, ZK VM, which uh, it's um, very useful and like uh, it could like help a lot like to the, the space to standardize like these ZK proofs, uh, but we are not uh, there yet. So you have like a lot of uh, uh, um, blockers like uh, to have the KVMs especially, and bottlenecks, especially like in terms of uh, uh, the amount of uh, resources you need to compute a proof. Uh, but we hope like uh, that these tools will develop in, uh, in the near future and that we will be able like to, to have like a, a bunch of, and a set of tools that uh, for identity that uh, will be built uh, on these uh, ZK VMs. Um, and you have also like another category, which is like a ZK signature algorithm, uh, such as uh, CL signatures and uh, BBS, uh, BBS plus uh, signatures. So uh, if you guys are like, uh, in the SSI uh, SSI space, like uh, since uh, since a bunch of time, usually you must know that like this uh, these two because they are like uh, the two algorithms that uh, are like uh, standardized like uh, to be used in uh, in the SSI uh, space. So um, now we are gonna like uh, dive into like a small uh, case study about like uh, what can we actually build with uh, with uh, with uh, with these ZK proofs. So we're gonna see like how we can apply it like to a signature verification. So here, let's say that uh, you have like some identity document, right? Um, so what is the, and inside of this identity document, you, can, you have like a, a, a digital signature from the, from the government. So you have uh, Alice, Alice has an identity which can be represented like with uh, her name, uh, her date of birth, uh, the place uh, where she lives. And let's say that this data is like kind of uh, concatenated and it represents like uh, her identity. So what we what the government can do is like they, it takes like this uh, concatenated version of like Alice identity, sorry, and uh, we'll hash it. So with a hash function such as uh, SHAT56, for example, then this hash is going to be signed and the governments like have a, have a, uh, will Um, no, I think, um, yeah, I think we lost the audio for Yanis. We can just send him in. Yeah, I think so. Well, we can wait um, a little to see if he comes back. Or I think he dropped and he'll come back in just a moment. It's a cliffhanger. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> That's great. Um, and I guess if anyone has questions, you can drop them in the chat as well. Okay. Um, oh, Giannis, you're back. Okay, great. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what happened. Here. Yeah. So, sorry. Yeah, I was saying, so let's say that uh, someone wants to verify your identity at like, a, at like a border or like at uh, customs. They will take uh, the document, read like the signature, 
uh, and the message that was signed. Patch the public key from the from an official uh, government website where like the, this public key is uh, published and verify the verify the your uh, document signature. But here you have one main issue, which is like in a case of a border, like it works. But like let's say that now we want like to verify this identity like on the internet or like just on a public blockchain. So the main issue here is that actually you're revealing like uh, the identity of Alice. So you know Alice's uh, name, you know like her date of birth, you know where she lives. So that's why like ZKPI are useful. And on the next slide, it's the same verification schema, but like uh, with a uh, with a uh, ZK Snark. So now we have a circuit, and in this circuit, as I, we introduced, like we can we can set what inputs we want to be private and what inputs we want to be public. So in that case, the signature and the message that was signed, we want them private. And we only want like uh, the circuit to reveal what uh, is the public key that was used to verify the signature. So inside of uh, what we can call snarkland, so inside of your circuit, what the prover is doing is like taking the inputs, uh, computing a proof. Uh, and then when uh, the prover knows like what he shouldn't reveal. So in that case, he knows that he shouldn't reveal the signature and the message. And he will output a proof that only like say, all right, uh, me, the prover, I verified the uh, signature. Uh, the, the message was signed with this public key, but I will not, I will not reveal what, uh, what was the content of the message, nor what was the signature. So then like, uh, if you set up like a, a, a Snark verifier for this uh, proof, you can like uh, check uh, in the public uh, inputs uh, that the public key is corresponding with the uh, published government's public key. And so then now like you have like a, a fully uh, private way to check uh, whether someone is uh, human or not and check uh, uh, their identities. Um, and also, um, I want to highlight here that uh, it can also like um, uh, enable a selective disclosure, but we will see it uh, with a, a, a case study on uh, Ananada. So cool. So that's like uh, already like super cool like to have like uh, such, uh, such tools. And so what we can do for it, with, with it. So uh, we are going to introduce with Cheddar like a bunch of uh, projects uh, that are using like uh, ZKPs at, uh, at PSC. They have like uh, libraries that you can uh, you can use and you can like uh, use them into your hacks. Uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, so the first, uh, the main, uh, the main uh, project we wanted to introduce is like uh, ZK email. So ZK email is doing what exactly we just introduced like with uh, uh, verification of a signature, but they are doing, they are applying it uh, in, uh, to emails. So inside, uh, all the emails are like uh, signed. Um, and then you can, uh, with the ZK email protocol, you can generate proofs that you have like some data in your email box from a certified issuer. So let's say you want to prove that uh, you have a verified uh, Twitter account. So you can do like either like a, a lost password uh, verification, or you can do like just a, um, just a insert like a, an email you received uh, from, uh, from, uh, from Twitter with uh, your uh, handle in, inside of it. And then you can like generate a proof that you have an email that was signed by the uh, uh, Twitter server with the right uh, public key. And you can like uh, apply like a uh, 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 regex on, the, on this email to check that uh, there is your handle inside of this email. And then you have like a proof that say, I'm the owner of this handle on Twitter and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm verified. So you, you have like a, uh, a bunch of use cases that you can build with this primitive. Um, for example, there is one protocol called the uh, ZKP2P where you can exchange money through proof of email. So basically like you can, uh, you can uh, prove that you uh, send some money through Venmo because you receive like uh, an email from Venmo and uh, you can prove that you send an, um, you sent uh, money from uh, through Venmo and then you can redeem some tokens like on the blockchain. So basically it's like peer-to-peer -peer, peer -peer exchange to exchange uh, uh, money through uh, through the chain and through uh, Venmo. Um, another another way to leverage this uh, zk primitive uh, through signature is uh, Anon Adar, uh, which is in the in the next slide. So Adar is the biggest identity program in the world with 1.4 billion people, um, and um, we built a protocol to prove your identity through this Adar. So um, in uh, ADAR, you have like um, two ways to get like uh, signed data. 
The first way is through uh, what uh, they call like the eADAR PDF. So you can go to the uh, agency website and you can uh, redeem um, a PDF. And inside of this PDF, you have like a QR code. And this QR code, uh, what is represented inside of this QR code is actually like uh, your identity and a signature. So they are using RSA SHA-256 to sign uh, the identity. And basically like the identity is represented as I, introdu I introduced like by a concatenation about like uh, information about you, your name, your last name, your address, um, your photo and stuff like that. And so we can take this signature and we can um, insert it into, inside of a, of a ZK circuit and generate proofs about your identity without revealing uh, who you are. So we are delivering, delivering like uh, this tool through uh, a TypeScript SDK. We have also like a Solidity library to, to check uh, proofs like uh, on the chain and build uh, on-chain uh, use cases. Uh, and we also build like a React library. So for developers, uh, uh, you can have like uh, uh, a wonderful developer experience. You can integrate this primitive under five minutes into your uh, website. Um, all right, so now like I introduced uh, like a pretty high level um, way to verify a signature with ZK, but I would just wanted like to dive a bit deeper into Ayanonada to show how we can leverage the same primitive about like uh, snarkifying the signature verification to enable selective disclosure. So, uh, sorry, this schema can be like a bit overwhelming, but uh, I just want like to introduce uh, some very important uh, components about like uh, the ZK circuit and how we can uh, how uh, how it is uh, working. So the first uh, things we need to do like uh, when uh, dealing with uh, this other data like inside of a circuit. Um, oh, sorry. Also, I just wanted to highlight that all this process is happening on a client. So no data is shared with any servers, and everything is like uh, client side. So we need like the end user is never sharing any information with any server or any parties. Everything is happening on their side and they can generate proof uh, locally. So what they are going to do, they are going to insert like their signed data. So this data, like in the process of signing, it's hashed and signed. So we have to do like uh, the same process inside of the circuit. So apply the same hash function and verify the RSA signature. So then we have like uh, authenticated the data. So the first two blocks are like super important because it's like the core of the protocol is like, all right, we know that uh, the signature is genuine and we know that the data relate that was signed is genuine and so then we can like process it so then once we we did that inside of the circuit we can access all the information about the user and we build like a selective disclosure on four fields so we can this, the prover can say if the person is like uh, more than 18 or not can reveal the gender of the person the state and the pin code of the of the person so and these are all features that you can set to the prover. So the prover can reveal um, nothing about the user and just add to the proof that says, all right, so this person definitely have like a, a signed document by the government. Uh, so we can prove uh, um, it's uh, his uh, identity. Or you can choose uh, to reveal like the four, val the four values. Then we need like some kind of a way to nullify. So you want like uh, to be the, you want the person to be Anon, but you want to, resolve always the same interaction with the same person. So if you have like voting logics, if you have like uh, uh, reading logics, you want to nullify some actions. So for that, we have like a, a very basic uh, con nullifying uh, construction, which is like you have like a what we call a salt in uh, hashing. So uh, just a random uh, parameter. And we take the bytes of the photo. And so we hash them together and then you can have a way to unify. And the unifier seed here is, uh, can be like application specific or action specific. So meaning that if you are an application and you want to do voting and you have a bunch of voting, like a weekly voting or monthly voting, you can change the unifier seed to be sure that have uh, um, always the same, uh, the same person like uh, voting only once. Uh, we also like uh, for security, we use the timestamp. So again, like as, this, as the, all the data is genuine, we can uh, take the timestamp of the signature and using like as a TOTP, so as a one-time password. So meaning that we can set a verifier to say, all right, so I want you to show me some proof, but I want that this proof derived from like signed data in less, less than three hours ago. So I can ensure that you were able to access your account and you were able to have access fresh data. Uh, yeah, and so that's, what makes it uh, awesome, like ZK-SNARK and programmable cryptography, is that 
you can not just like uh, uh, generate a ZK proof that you have an identity, but you can authenticate some data in, inside of Snarkland and then you can play with it and like build like a custom selective disclosure feature. All right, so next uh, next project is uh, the same as Adara I introduced, but it's uh, uh, applied to the to the worldwide because it's applied to passports. So uh, the same as uh, Adar as uh, identity signed data, uh, passport also like have a signature inside of it uh, of them. Uh, as I introduced, like um, in your passport, if you have like uh, you have like this uh, small ICA or logo, if you have it, that means that your passport is uh, signed. And so you have a chip inside of the passport that you can access through NFC, and you can read uh, you can read the data of the passport and you can read the signature. So the same as we introduced with uh, Adar and with uh, Snarkify the signature verification, you can apply it to passports. So we have a protocol called Open Passport. They, did an, they are doing an amazing job uh, doing all the flow and same all the components that you need like to generate a proof uh, through passport. Uh, yeah, and so the only thing with passport is that like uh, not all the passports share the same signature algorithm. So there is like a, a lot of work to do to integrate all the algorithm and to have like all the passport compliant. Uh, Open Passport, like if you go to their website through the QR code, they have like a wonderful map where you can see like what uh, passport is compatible with the protocol for now and what they are working on and integrating as signature algorithm uh, to have uh, to to be able like to generate. Uh, uh, proofs about them. Uh, all right, so I will uh, I will let, I will uh, set or take it from here and introduce uh, other cool projects. Thank you so much, Yanis. Uh, so I'm Cedar and I'm a software engineer and I also work with the PSC team. And um, I'm going to show you other two projects: TLS Notary and Semaphore. And finally, I would like to share some slides about our our expectations and the challenges we have had during uh, the last months related to SSI. So TLS Notary is one of, um, of the PSC projects and it is basically based on TLS. TLS is pretty famous, um, used by almost everyone uh, today. And it's basically DS after the, the HTTP, HTTP um, protocol. Um, so TLS Notary um, basically uh, allows people to prove and selectively disclose um, data transmitted or TLS. In other words, it enables a client to uh, verify the authenticity of data obtained from a server. And, and um, eventually shard this also called verifier. So we uh, divided into three phases that like the core of the protocol um, are the same as the TLS protocol. Two actors are the same component actually, but can they can also be uh, two separate actors. So um, the, the first phase is the MPC TLS phase and um, the client and the notary or the verifier in this phase run an MPC protocol, enabling the client to connect to and exchange data with the TLS um, enabled server. And uh, basically the, the, the notary um, here is not the, the man in the middle, uh, but it participates in, in the security multi-party computation and um, um, operates uh, in, in the TLS connection without seeing any plain text. Um, so the notary basically validate uh, the authenticity of the data uh, the client received from the server. Uh, the second phase is sele the selective disclosure, um, which is the phase where the client can uh, take the data and selectively disclose the data uh, that can that he wants to or they want to uh, to share with the verifier. And um, they can also eventually use zero knowledge proofs. Uh, to make certain claims uh, about uh, about their data. The, the last phase, the third and the last phase is uh, the data verification. 
uh, where fi uh, finally the client can um, provide all the information a, a third party verifier needs to be sure that the client's claim is valid. So an interesting point of, it, of this um, protocol is that the server, um, the server doesn't know anything about um, the, the verifier or the notary. And uh, uh, um, the, the TL TLS connection between the proven as uh, the, the like the, the TLS connection, uh, which means that uh, with TLS notary, uh, you you like developer can basically build any kind of application uh, built on top uh, or leveraging existing services without requiring any modifications to their APIs or additional integrations, which means that you can basically um, use Twitter or your bank account or any kind of service you can find online in the internet. Um, and you can take that data, that TLS data, you can and you can prove um, something about that, that, that data without any um, any additional uh, modifications to, to Twitter or any kind of service. Um, so there are many interesting use cases. One of them, some of them are, uh, for example, account ownership verification. Uh, you can prove you have access to an account on a web platform, or you can prove you own a, a Twitter account or an X account. Uh, reputation verification. Uh, you can verify user experience uh, on platforms like um, Airbnb or Uber or real-world asset ownership verification, you can confirm uh, ownership of, uh, of assets like vehicles or real estate. Um, another uh, application, and I'm, uh, I am one of the main developers here, is Semaphore, which is one, I think, uh, one of the simplest uh, uh, zero-knowledge protocols. Um, so it is a zero-knowledge protocol that um, allows users to, to prove the, their membership uh, in a group and additionally send anonymous messages such as votes, a feedback or text. Um, uh, all of this without revealing the user's identity. So there are mainly two components. Um, the identity, which is actually yeah, the DSA keeper built on top of used to sign messages or, or verify signatures uh, as an additional feature. And the second main component of this protocol is um, uh, groups. Uh, groups are actually incremental Merkle trees um, that are um, binary trees where the leaves are inserted sequentially, uh, meaning that uh, the next level, the next leaf of, uh, of the tree um, will have the, the index of the previous leaf plus one. Uh, in addition, there is also a nullifier mechanism, which is very similar to the, the Hanon Adar uh, one. Um, and it is, of course, very useful in applications like uh, uh, private voting applications where you can vote only once, but in uh, many other uh, use cases as well. Um, I would like to show you the secret of Semaphore. As I said before, um, Semaphore is super simple. Um, the circuit is very, very small and light, and um, and uh, it's very uh, efficient as well because there are not many constraints. Uh, it uses Graph16, and uh, the circuit can be split into three different components. The first one is the, the proof of membership. Um, as you can see, there are some private uh, private inputs and some uh, public inputs and outputs. So, as I said before, the first component of this circuit is the, the proof of membership, um, which is basically the path from the leaf to the to the root, um, which is used to uh, to prove the membership of your identity. Your identity is basically in this schema um, the, the private key. Um, the secret. Um, in the circuit, um, get the, the public key from the private key and um, the hash of the public key is the identity commitment, which is the leaf uh, in the Merkle tree. Um, the other component is the nullifier, uh, which as I said before, it's, um, it's very important because it uh, prevents the same proof to be used twice, basically. Um, 
And uh, another component is the message, of course, uh, which is like the, the piece of data you can share to 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 vote or to share your your feed. Your I put that bitch in the back with a Burberry on. Hey, hey, to this day, oh, there's a train right here. I'm not trying to get hit. I'm walking around. Insta uh, I okay. <laughs> and. So I would like to, to um, uh, describe some examples of applications you, you can build with Semaphore. Um, one of them is quite obvious, like a private voting application, but it can also be used for whistleblowing, for example, applications, um, or uh, anonymous authentication systems or private reputation system, or more broadly, like uh, civil resistance, uh, airdrops or pools or systems. Um, Semaphore uh, also provides an SDK, a JavaScript SDK, so you can use it to, to build your applications or, or protocols. Uh, there are also some uh, Solidity contracts uh, to manage groups and uh, verify proofs on chain. And a demo app uh, that can be used as a boilerplate for your project. So I would like to uh, show you some challenges uh, we have identified um, during our research on SSI and the identity stack as a PSC team. One of them is a Solidity verifier for BBS Plus. Uh, BBS Plus is, uh, uh, is used a lot in this space, um, but we realized that there is no uh, Solidity verifier or any on-chain verifier actually. So one challenge is to build this, uh, this component um, with the BBS plus algorithm. And uh, other interesting um, challenges to face are uh, like uh, a recovery system. Um, we noticed that many wallets uh, don't have uh, like a specific solution for, for the, uh, recovering the, the keys of the user. So MPC can definitely be useful here and helpful, um, or even for uh, for uh, the credential issuance. Um, another uh, missing piece we identified is the uh, the centralized PKA the PKA uh, infrastructure uh, built with, with DITs. Um, and in general, uh, we have felt that. Um, our protocols definitely need to be integrated or to be compatible with the uh, W3C uh, standards, VCs and the ADs. So, um, yeah, like um, in general, uh, the main challenges uh, other than these ones uh, we have faced are lack of standards and interoperability and complexity and accessibility. So, as a PSC team, we aim to make the protocols we are working on more compatible, and we would like to see projects in the hackathon uh, that goes uh, toward that direction. So prices and expectations, uh, this is the list of prices and uh, what um, what would we like to see? Um, of course, ZKPs, MPCs, and FHE technologies uh, that can be used to solve a lot of problems, especially, I think, in the SSI space. Um, and of course, um, uh, PSC tools, as I said before, it will be nice to see a combination of them or one of them used to solve SSI uh, uh, challenges. Um, it will be nice to see the DAD and VC usage, of course, and um, um, Sustainability and clarity are also uh, good qualities uh, we will consider. Um, so yeah, we hope to 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 have many interesting projects, and we wish to uh, we wish everyone a fun hackathon. Uh, thank you so much, and we are open to any questions. Like Kim has a question, go ahead. Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Um, I mean, cause this is great stuff. I'm going to start with just one. And um, so 
I am curious to learn more about the role of DSLs. Um, can you talk a bit about that? I think you mentioned more at the beginning how, um, you know, in general, each, you know, sort of, I guess, use case or um, kind of, I, I don't know how to segment it. You know, there's a development of domain specific language and, and I'm guessing that can inform things like what the issuer can express, what they can choose to make select, what they can choose to make uh, discoverable, and in turn, what the verifier can um, request. So I'm just curious to hear a little bit more context on DSLs. Yes, sure, I can I can take this one. Um, yeah, so right now, like if you want to do like uh, turn any like arbitrary computation into um into a zk proof and so you want to want to kind of uh, customize like the job of the prover and you want like to 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 be able to implement uh, any um operation logic such as uh, multiplication and addition uh and you want like uh, to constrain them to build the proof so if you want to do that like uh, the best way today like to, to do it is like uh, use uh, using a dsl so um, DSL, you have like uh, now plenty of no, of one. Like I I I, um, I spoke about like Circom, Hello Two. You have also um, Noir. Um, so you have like uh, these DSLs, and what you can do with these DSLs is like you can build and program like uh, the job of the prover. So you can implement like any logic that you that you you want uh, to uh, constrain uh, the job of the prover. So in uh, the case uh, we in the case study we we spoke about uh, so you can do a signature verification so there had been like a bunch of work done like in the in the open source community and especially like supported by PSE to implement like uh, uh, a lot of logics in uh, in circom for example so you have uh, um, like uh, the main one being for example zk email so I see it like uh, I spoke about like Anonadar and Open Passport. So these projects are, for example, uh, using the implementation of RSA chat 56 done by ZK email. Um, so yeah, yeah, there, you you can find like a bunch of uh, already implemented logics uh, in uh, in this uh, in these uh, DSLs. And for now, yeah, they are like uh, the main way to do like uh, what we can call like. Uh, um, arbitrary computation or like full purpose uh, ZK, ZK proofs. Hello. I just want to understand about open passport. So what all national, uh, I was not sure on the things like open, uh, any passport has the NFC tips that can be used to read the data, but I would just uh, uh, have, have, have a look into it, but I just want to understand like which passports are currently uh, compatible with open passport and let's say we want to try open passports then uh, what are other ways we can do it do we have some test passport or something like that yes so um i will uh right after answering the question i will uh, go on their website and like send you the link so they build like a, a visual map where you can see like all the passports that are compatible with the protocol so as i said the main challenge here, here is that so the specification about the chip and how the data is, store, is stored in how you read this data is like shared across like all the passports in the world. The only thing is that uh, you have like a, not like a, um, a consensus around like a signature algorithm. So each country have like a, their own uh, specification of the signature algorithm. Some of them are like shared across uh, some countries. But the, the problem is that uh, you don't have like a one standard signature algorithm. Uh, and uh, we spoke about DSLs. Uh, DSLs are like uh, kind of hard. So uh, having like uh, all the signature um, implemented into these DSLs is like a, a job that we are we are still uh, we are still uh, we are still uh, doing. Uh, but yeah, sure, I can I can send you I can send you that the map. Uh, and uh, for the test data, yeah, I think like uh, the Open Passport team built uh, built some. Uh, 
um, some test uh, test data that you can use, like to just uh, build uh, build the flow, uh, generating a proof based uh, on the um, uh, dummy dummy data, and um, and uh, you can you can uh, you can build the flow without having uh, to use like your uh, real uh, data passport data. Sorry. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. In in India, we have DG Yatra that uh, issues a verifiable credentials using biometrics of Aadhaar. So maybe open passport can be used for inter international uh, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. I, that's why I think like open passport and uh, other projects are like complementary. Is that um, so, for example, we studied like the case of uh, India, and so India is rolling out like uh, this, like uh, uh, what we what we call biometric passport, like we've signed data inside of it. But uh, what we saw in the figure about like the rollout is like um, not uh, it's still slow, and uh, um, like very few people in India have like a, a signed passport. But that said, like a bunch of people have like uh, Aadhaar and they have signed data, so. Uh, is the way to go like uh, to generate proof of identity uh, from signature. I said I have more, and so I'll I'll uh, <laughs> I say throttle my questions. Um, one thing that's really interesting and uh, gives me a lot of hope in seeing Anand Adhar in the Open Passport or the uh, Open Passport project is that what you've done is really composable, right? So if one has concerns about the um, you know correlatable correlatability aspects of something like say mobile driver's license, it's seeming like what you're Kind of building is something on top of that such that you can get the privacy guarantees and then i think you touched on this in the passport like you know certain entities would be required to accept the official full thing whatever maybe they're regulated but for areas where people don't need that full data this can help kind of avoid the over identification problem that we deal with today. So um, I'm guessing then it's it's seeming like what you're doing is just kind of, you know, finding these additive ways to build on top of existing models. And depending on how open those standards are, or, you know, all the aspects in those standards, um, you know, you can sort of achieve what you want. It's just sort of a you know how how open are they and how open the ecosystem is to adopting it is is that kind of more or less true uh yes i think like you you touch a really important point and that's why um like we we are maybe like uh, you have like the ssi spectrum or the stack spectrum and uh, the beauty about like uh, programmable cryptography and what we the job we are doing like uh, uh, with all this project develop, uh, developed by PSE is that, so in SSI, you have like uh, the usual flow about having, uh, giving some tool to, to an official issuer and then this issuer is integrating this tool and like signing, signing data. But uh, what we are doing is like uh, enabling another field uh, inside of SSI is self-attestation. Is like with uh, the already uh, present uh, like uh, uh, available data, I can generate my own self-attestation, uh, which can be uh, cryptographically secure by all these uh, tools like uh, MPC, FHE, and, uh, and zero knowledge uh, technology. So yeah, definitely like uh, it's the beauty of programmable cryptography, being able like to just uh, take the data that uh, is already signed and that you, you have inside of uh, your documents or your phone and turn them into proofs, and the proofs can be turned into um, self-attestations. So that's why we want to have like our projects like more compatible with uh, with uh, VCs and DIDs. So then, like uh, other SSI providers can like use these self-attestations, and like uh, you don't need like uh, to have uh, any uh, local governments or governments like uh, uh, being like having to um, integrate these tools. They can like just rely on self-attestation and you can already build use cases uh, on top of that. Of course, like we want to see like more and more and more like uh, official issuers like adopting these tools and like uh, at the core of them, like uh, uh, issuing like uh, already uh, like uh, uh, VCs and uh, adopting the IDs. But 
like uh, for now it can be like the way to build some use cases like just to show the purpose and like just to show how it's important to have like uh, privacy and have uh, ownership uh, over our own data and build use cases on top of that so then like we can have like something to put on the table and say right like see what we can do when we have like uh, privacy over our data and like programmable uh, uh, more programmability uh, around our uh, uh, identities uh, so yeah that's uh, that's uh, that's what we are trying to achieve here. I don't know if uh, Cedar, you have like something you, you wanted to add. It was great. Otto has something in the chat. Let's see. Yeah, I just I just thought it, it would be for, I mean, I'm, I'm not directly participating in the hackathon, but for people considering to participate, the, I think those are the skills that you need, right? You need to know solidity, probably. You need to know how to use these these opcodes for cryptography, like pairings. Uh, well, similar, right? Uh, to be able to validate that that BBS plus a signature scheme in a, in a smart contract. I think that's the key challenge that the the team here from PSE is outlining. Yes, exactly. You're right. And uh, if any hackers is like interested, like into this challenge, like we can uh, we can discuss like uh, in the the Discord channel uh, inside of the diff uh, server. Uh, yeah. So uh, as uh, Cedar just said, like there is no precompile for the BLS twelve uh, three eight the one uh, curve uh, for the BBS algorithm. Um, so then you would have like to change the way the algorithm is implemented. Uh, to use the BN 250, 254 uh, curve and uh, build a solidity verifier for, for that, yeah. Are there any last questions? Uh, just for my side, the deadline, I think, Limari, for the like registration, or is it all the way up to submission? Yeah, you can, can register all the way up to the submission point. Mm -hmm. November 4th. Perfect. Yeah, I'll try to get this out on Twitter. I think it's a great challenge. And yeah, I'll reshare it, try to get more folks interested in this. Perfect. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Thank you. Um, so uh, if you guys wanted to chat a bit more, I know Kim might have some more, um, but um, you can go ahead. I will have to hop off for the next session. Um, but thank you so much, Cedar and Giannis. It was a great session. Um, it's fascinating work that you guys are doing. And I hope we get a lot of people submitting to this challenge. Okay. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you. I'll hop off. If you guys want to chat, um, feel free. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.